Okay, we've got quite the little round table here. We are at Mays High School, Dorothy Height Academy for Leadership, and we'd like everybody to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Sharon Hawkins Gay, and I am the Academy Leader for the Dorothy Height Academy of Leadership at Benjamin Mays High School, Atlanta Public Schools. My name is Badia Ascari, and I am an English teacher with the Dorothy Height Academy of Leadership. My name is Danielle Rainwater, and I am a doll. <laughs> my name is Jasmine Pascal, and I am a doll. Awesome. My name is Kimara Wells, and I'm a freshman ninth grade doll. My name is Katia Villalba, and I'm a freshman at Maze, and I'm a doll. Okay, now, uh, Ms. Wells, explain what a doll is. A doll is, well, describes the Dorothy Height Academy of Leadership. Mm -hmm. It expresses an all-girls academy. It tells us how we how we should act. Um, so it's kind of a motivation for you to, to, to yeah. behave well and, and act professionally and mm -hmm. be a young woman, be mature. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Gay, talk a little bit about that, but also let's talk about why we have moved to a single gender option inside Mays High School because we have a single gender for boys, we have a single gender for girls. Right. What are the benefits that you see as a principal or an academy leader for this? Well, the um, most important thing is that the young ladies are able to focus more on the instruction that is being delivered by the teachers. In a typical co-ed classroom, you have a lot of distractions. And usually you have the boys or the girls are both vying for each other's attention. However, in the single gender academy, you are able to uh, provide instruction the way girls learn best. Because, believe it or not, boys and girls do receive information differently as far as their brains um, you know, functioning. Mm -hmm. And the way we deliver the instruction is catered or tailored for the young ladies in the academy. And Ms. Uh, Wells earlier said that uh, she was called a doll as well as the other girls. And it's sort of funny how that started. The Dorothy Hyde Academy of Leadership acronym is DAHL, D-H-A-L. But for some reason, the rest of the school population started calling our girls dolls, D-O-L-L-S, and the name sort of stuck. Right. And so all of my young ladies are now known as the dolls. I'm going to talk to Ms. Pascal for a moment because I believe we have, you were the one who went to uh, Coretta Scott King last year and you also were at Young Middle School okay. with uh, one of the other students. Mm -hmm. And just talk, talk about how Coretta Scott King kind of prepared you for a single gender atmosphere and what were the benefits then that you're still seeing now being around all girls? Um, being at Coretta and coming to the Doll Academy, it was like an easy transformation for me. I was mm -hmm. I was so ready, I was like, I was like, ooh, I'm good to meet some new girls, have some more friends. But stuff. what's so great about it? What's good about being around in, in an all girl atmosphere in terms of your academics and the social aspects of it? The learning environment and the exposure. Mm -hmm. I think they go good well hand in hand because if you do good in your learning environment, mm -hmm. you get more exposure. And if you want exposure, you have to do good in your learning environment. I think that um, I think that it's good to be prepared in class. For those who want to be successful, you're going to have to learn how to work with people you do not familiar of, and that's what I learned to do mm -hmm. from Coretta and both the Doll Academy. Ms. Rainwater, apparently you weren't too terribly excited at first about uh, the Single Gender Academy. Talk about your ambivalence about it, like why it didn't seem like it would be that fun, but then talk about how you kind of came around to it and you started to appreciate what it could do for you. I didn't really like the Doll Academy because I thought just females, the idea of all females being together, it was just drama. So that was my first impression, but once I got to know everybody, it was like, it's a good experience, and I feel like I have a lot of sisters in this academy, and we all look out for each other. And how does that play itself out? When you say somebody looks out for you, I mean, we've got a lot of your friends here who have you, you've gotten to know. What is it about having these classmates around you kind of getting your back a little bit and kind of helping you get focused on your academics? Like if, say, Ms. Pascal, 
this if she sees me and she sees that I'm kind of struggling in something, she's there and she's going to help me. So that's a good thing about the Dog Academy. You said earlier that before you didn't like pretty much any of your classes in middle school, and now like you couldn't pick one that you hated more. Now it seems like you can't pick your favorite subject that you like the most. What is it about the academics here? And I know we have a teacher right next to you, so the pressure's on. <laughs> what is it about the academics that kind of make you now excited about going to class and, and studying more? Because it's actually like they take out the time and they focus on the things that we need to know. And like, say, for instance, Miss Oscar, she see me struggling a little part of her class. She's going to take me aside and give me that, you know, the talk and know let me know that she's here and I she can help me through whatever it is I need to be here with. Mrs. Scar, we just talked about this off camera, but if you could repeat your thoughts about the different approach you have as a teacher to an all girl situation as opposed to a co-ed situation where it says before when you were teaching at Mays, the girls kind of sought you out from across right. the school. Now it's kind of like fish in a barrel. They, they can find you pretty easier. But what is the difference in teaching approach from a co-ed situation to a single gender, all girls? Okay, well, um, one of the differences in my teaching approach is that one of the things that are very important in terms of education is the students being able to relate their academics, whatever that content area is, and make a personal connection to their lives. Because if it isn't relevant to them, they're not going to be interested in it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a group, a single gender group of girls, um, for example, it's easier to be able to pull things from their culture and from their understandings to present to them and allow them to present that they can relate to that context and the information becomes more readily accessible to them and they retain it easier. Mm -hmm. So because I'm a female, they're females, I was once their age, no matter how long ago, and they shared so many different things with me. It's easy for me to take a story from our textbook and say, these are, we need to learn the symbolism and irony. What are some of the things that you represent in your life? And they'll pick things out or she'll pick something out. And it all connects back because our culture is all the same just based on that single gender culture. Okay. And so that, that's one of the strategies that I actually utilize in my classroom that they've been very receptive to in terms of getting the information. Now don't let these shirts fool you. Everyone here is in junior ROTC. And Ms. Vialva, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, is it, is it fun to be in junior ROTC? I remember you saying it wasn't too fun at the beginning because everybody had to wear a uniform. But what is it about being in junior ROTC that helps when you're a student? Well, it helped me to understand that being in job to see and it can help you be a better person and be a better citizen and to um in job to see you do a lot of teamwork and know each other and respect each other and at first i didn't like job to see because i didn't want to wear a uniform but now that after they talked to me and told me how many opportunities I had in job to see. I started thinking about all this, the stuff to, that could um, be later on in the future. I think you said something about there's some scholarship potential there. You might be able to get scholarships if you get yeah. your grades up. Well, Lisa, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to talk to us. I hope we got everybody a chance to, to get a word in edgewise. But thank you, everybody, and good luck on this school year. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.